Uh, Bernie Sanders tonight uh, won uh, the great state of Oregon. It's been called by everybody. As we're doing this live, uh, he has, it looks like he's up uh, six points right now with 60% reporting, uh, but it has been called by everyone, including TYT. Uh, now, uh, in terms of Kentucky, uh, the Jan Hugo rule is if it's within 0.5, if your uh, person wins or loses, that is in reality a tie. I've been saying that from day one, literally from Iowa on. And, uh, and I said during that coverage, if, uh, if Bernie wins by uh, 0.5, it's a tie. And uh, he wound up losing by 0.2 in, in Iowa, I believe. That's a statistical tie. In the case of Kentucky, it looked like at 99% reporting, Hillary Clinton was going to win by one point. And I said live as we were doing the show, that is a win, okay? So you can't call that a tie. That's not within 0.5. One point is one point. It's a win. Now, as it turned out afterwards, they took some counties off, they put them back on, and at the end of the day, she won by 0.5. Sorry, jank rule, that's a tie, okay? And so I'm not making it up afterwards. If you watch the live coverage, I know that uh, the whole coverage this time was just for members, but the members saw it, and you could become a member too, tytnetwork.com slash join, if you're watching this in some other uh, place although that would be a little ironic, but I think we might put one or two clips up on YouTube. Anyways, okay, um, but get the whole thing when you can. And we uh, put up our coverage afterwards as well, so you can watch it on demand. Anyways, so uh, we got a tie in K uh, Kentucky, and, and we've got a win in, in Oregon for Bernie Sanders. But if you want to call Kentucky a small win for Hillary, I got you. I'm not sweating that detail, right? So realistically... Uh, this is not nearly enough uh, delegates for Bernie Sanders. You got to keep it real on that. He needed to win 66% of the delegates going forward. He didn't win 66% in Oregon, the state that he won. He only won by six points, let alone in Kentucky, uh, where I just told you what happened, right? Uh, on the other hand, um, it's again, it would have been nice if Bernie Sanders had won by around one point in Kentucky, because then he could make the argument, I won in Indiana, I won in West Virginia, I won in Kentucky, I won in Oregon. My gosh, he's got no momentum whatsoever. Here, at least Hillary Clinton gets to say, well, I won you know, that state. And by the way, as we've been saying throughout, she's won many states before that, right? So I think in terms of optics, she at least got, she could breathe a sigh of relief on being able to say she won Kentucky tonight. Uh, in terms of delegate count, uh, Every race that Bernie Sanders doesn't win in a crushing style is a sigh of relief for Hillary Clinton because he's running out of time and he's running out of space. Okay, so those are real. But uh, but I also want to talk about how he gave a, a great energetic speech tonight, and um, man, that guy does not give up. Yeah. And and I know that some people in the media are annoyed by that. Some people in the certainly in the Clinton camp are annoyed by that. A lot of people in the Democratic Party establishment are annoyed by that. But as I look at it, and he looks just as fired up as he did on day one, and he's talking about all the economic injustices that we're going to correct, and he gets specific details of how we're going to do criminal justice reform, and we're going to liberate people uh, in, just, in every way imaginable. And here on the show, we were talking about how, my God, imagine if he uh, stopped imprisoning hundreds of thousands of people who were just in there on marijuana charges. Well, forget the guys who are already in prison. If he just stopped arresting people, for marijuana possession and all the economic good that could do, let alone the freedom that it brings. And that's one of dozens of issues he talked about tonight and the crowd was roaring as always. Okay, so let me jump in because I love that you pivoted to his speech because I think that's important. So you mentioned the reality of the numbers and you know, Look, there's still a small possibility that he can win the nomination, but we got to keep it real, right? It's becoming increasingly difficult for him to do so, especially since he needed to win at least 65% uh, percent, uh, of the vote moving forward, and unfortunately that didn't happen in Kentucky tonight. Um, but I will say this, uh, it's important for him to stay in the race, regardless of what the establishment says, regardless of the fear-mongering you hear from the Hillary campaign, indicating that if he doesn't drop off, uh, or drop out, Trump's going to win, he's helping Trump, whatever. All that stuff should be brushed to the side. Because right now, what Bernie Sanders is providing is a voice for the disenfranchised and for the poor. You don't hear lengthy speeches where politicians are specifically mentioning these individuals and how they want to help them. Specifically raising awareness about issues like income inequality, political corruption, climate change, 
prescription drug manufacturers taking advantage of us. These are issues that we should be educated about through our media, but we don't even get that for the most part, right? Of yep. course, with independent media, you get that. Um, but I love that you know he has a voice. He's getting through to people, and what he's providing for those who have been disenfranchised is so much more valuable than anything else that could come out of this yeah. election. He even I, talks about Native Americans when there's almost no votes to get there, yeah. right? But he doesn't talk about it because he cares about the votes. He talks about it because he cares about the justice of being able to serve that community. That's why you never hear any other politician talking yeah. about it. They're like, what's in it for me? Native Americans are, don't vote enough for me, right? Well, the but it's not about him. His slogan isn't, I'm with him. Yeah. The only other politician who brings up Native Americans is Donald Trump, and only to attack Elizabeth Warren's ancestry. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. So look, the, the numbers the numbers don't look good. Obviously, like somebody tweeted me earlier today, like, "Oh, it makes me sad that that they seem to be losing hope." And I get what you're saying. I, I personally believe, and this is this is just me because I, I strive to be a robot. I have hope is like an emotional state that I have in the absence of information, and gradually, as I gather information, I replace the emotion with facts. Um, but that doesn't change that obviously still support him, loved his speech, and there is still a path. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily a delegate path, although that's not impossible. It's, ex it's just extremely unlikely. Um, we're going to talk about the numbers soon, even in California. It's not looking, it's not looking great, and he has to destroy in California. Um, but it's still not impossible. And in, and in two months, when they're at that convention, look, Trump is not going to become drastically more popular because as he talks more people people hate him he's a crazy person but neither is Hillary I, I don't see her drastically raising her favorables with the population especially with the way that we know she's going to campaign it's 100% anti-populist especially in comparison to Donald Trump and so that combined with the way Bernie is already polling and I saw on CNN they're messing with the map and they're trying to figure out how to get to 270 for everybody like, forget all of those manipulations. Bernie Sanders, we saw today, is beating, it, beating Trump in Georgia. You could blow that entire map away with Bernie Sanders. And the lie that he hasn't been attacked, he's already been criticized in the most disingenuous and ridiculous ways on a daily basis for months now. He's the guy. He's the guy that can beat Trump. He's the guy that can easily win the presidency. So Johnny Pie has a lot of nicknames, but we might have to add Spock to them, Spock Iderola. For this <laughs> sentence alone, I wrote it down. Hope is an emotional state in the absence of information. Wow, that was very eloquent. <laughs> it, yes, but it's also <laughs> kind of creepy in, in how it's robotic creep. it is. Oh, yeah, and totally. Yeah, and most people would be like, you should have both, and that's why my therapist <laughs> criticized me for like express your emotions, man. I get that. So but see, he is Spock. You have a therapist? <laughs> you, well, this, is back in the, this is back in the day. Okay, okay all right. Well, it, it well, largely worked. It didn't <laughs> stick. Hold on, but let me respond a little bit to that because, like, we, we do get it from, you know, avid Bernie supporters. And here's the thing. We're not here to lie to you guys to make you feel get better. We're yes. here to tell you the truth, okay? And honestly, some of the truth sucks, and it sucks for us. And a lot of times I've left uh, the show feeling very deflated and terrible that... You know, the, the, the primaries didn't work out as well as they should have for Bernie Sanders. At the same time, I'm not going to feed you guys misinformation to make you feel better. And if that offends you, well, you're going to be offended a lot. Because <laughs> yeah. it's the just the way it goes. The mainstream media lies to you. Yeah. You're, you, like, everybody says that they like us because we're real. Yeah. Right. That's what real is. It doesn't just mean real when it's cool or real when it's fun. It's real when it kind of sucks. Yeah. But it's... The, the suck isn't the end. There's stuff after the suck. Yeah. Yes, and and so you, you don't just get to keep it real when it's convenient. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's uh, not what it means. But I, I'm kind of, I'm a half full guy, right? So uh, hope for me is an emotional state in the abundance of information. So <laughs> let, let me give you a little bit of that hope. Uh, now, it might not be in the electoral sense that you're looking for, but uh, number one, um, Bernie Sanders has won on the issue of the minimum wage. Before we were having a conversation of whether it should be go from 7.25 to like, oh my God, nine dollars. People were flirting with. Somebody <laughs> said ten. It was like, wow, that was just like two years ago, right? Now he's he moved the goalpost all the way to 15. Then Hillary Clinton had to try to catch up and get, and she got to 12. And then just about a month ago, she's bragging in New York when they passed it at 15, as if she had the idea for 15 million, 15 dollar minimum wage. No, 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 no. Bernie Sanders had that idea, and even if he loses electorally, 
He won on that policy. And remember with Bernie Sanders, I, when I interviewed him here on the Young Turks, and I asked him, hey, in the, in, the, in the situation where you don't win, what is it that you want? And he immediately gave a list of policies that he wanted. There was no talk of like, hey, maybe I could be VP as a cabinet. I know that he wouldn't, like any reasonable politician wouldn't say, all right, I'll take Secretary of you know, uh, Treasury and we'll call it a day. Of course not. But they would have intimated it and their answer would have been around that rather than around, here are the policies I want for the American people, right? Which is what he listed. And he already got one of them in terms of the minimum wage in all those different cities that he listed in his speech today, right? In Seattle, LA, New York, and all these different places, it is already fifteen dollars. Oh, yeah. He's already won, right? And that's just uh, getting warmed up. In my lifetime, I was telling these guys as we're doing the show live, um, I, I, I never saw a politician say that the business model of Wall Street is fraud. Yeah, and we should we shouldn't negotiate with the banks. We shouldn't regulate the big banks as they are today. We should break up the big banks. That is amazing. And now you've got Hillary Clinton taking $15 million just in the last quarter from the big banks, as uh, again, Senator Sanders pointed out uh, tonight in his speech, at least pretending that, mm -hmm. oh, I'd break up the big banks too. I yeah. mean, if the situation was right, I'd break them up. Even though money doesn't affect politics and it's totally fine and they're cool. Uh, of course. He moved the conversation. And, uh, and by the way, right now, all that talk of like he's got to get out, he's hurting Hillary. No, you don't get it, you schmucks. CNN just ran. Uh, even CNN, now that Donald Trump uh, doesn't have his empty podium anymore since he's already won, they ran about a half an hour at least of Bernie Sanders' speech. That's free media for the Democratic Party. Yeah. And in most of that speech, he attacked Donald Trump. You've got a situation here where it's two against one in attacking Donald Trump. That's not a bad thing, that's a great thing, right? And then finally, uh, you want to talk about winning, he's won the future. He, he wins in every demographic under the age of 45. I know what the mainstream media say. They say, oh, those young kids, they'll get jaded just like we did. Uh, and then they'll uh, give up all these dreams and hopes of revolution and making things better. <laughs> things don't get better, okay? Mm -hmm. They'll learn how to swallow that bitter pill like we did, right? I don't think so. Yeah, and it's not just the bitter pill, Jenk. What what they fail to understand two things that are different about our generation compared to older generations. Number one, the country has moved so extremely to the right that to to expect liberals today to become even more conservative in the future, I think is ridiculous. Like I have actually gotten more liberal as I've grown older. The paradigm has shifted politically in the country, right? We've become very right wing. But also at the same time, the reason why people become more conservative as they age is because they attain more wealth, right? Older generations were able to do that. And right now, the millennial generation is having a very difficult time getting on its feet because of the terrible economy we've inherited, right? And we have the issue of student loan debt, which is huge, okay? At this point, it's surpassed credit card debt, it's passed $1 trillion. That's how much students owe in student loan debt in the country right now. And so, yeah, the system is rigged against us. And to think that we're just gonna not only accept that system, but fight for it is ridiculous. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, so I think they have a fundamental miscalculation. So when Anna says the country has moved right, what we mean is that the political establishment has moved right. So a lot of Barack Obama's positions today are actually way to the right of Ronald Reagan's positions. You know, the Republicans are always crying about amnesty. You know who did the original amnesty? Ronald Reagan. And by the way, that was not like something they called amnesty. It was amnesty. He said everybody that's here illegally. Yeah. Okay, you now have amnesty and you all get to stay here. And back then, they, they were like, wow, what a right wing of Ronald Reagan is. Now that's a left wing position. Yes. Right? So politically, the country's moved right. But in terms of the actual people, the polling indicates the country is significantly center left and moving further left because the younger generation is more progressive than any generation we've ever had since we've been doing polling. Yeah. And not by a little, but by a lot. And so the miscalculation that the, the establishment press has, because they are the establishment, is they think, no, 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 we're always going to win. It's always going to be the status quo. No, look at what happened on the right wing side with Trump. Look at what's happening on the left wing side with Bernie Sanders. Uh, the jig is up. They're on to you. Politicians are not serving them. They're serving their donors. 
everybody's sick of the establishment. There's a revolution afoot and that tsunami is definitely coming. And so Bernie Sanders is the best representation of that. So even if he loses electorally and that's not over yet and there's California is the biggest state and we're going to do our part and we're going to vote and we don't get swayed by who's winning and who we think is going to be on the winning team. We vote based on policies, right? Uh, but even if he loses electorally, his idea and his message is almost bound for victory. That victory is almost inevitable. Mm -hmm. I believe electorally it will almost certainly happen in the next election. Uh, but what's much more important to me and I think to the country is actually fixing the system. And one of the ways that you do that is you get an amendment to get money out of politics. Bernie Sanders is constantly talking about public financing of elections so that the private financiers of those elections don't get everything from the politicians. That makes sense. We got to make sure that we win on that goal because that's the thing that fixes everything else.